One person is found dead on a back porch in the Northland. Police then discover two more bodies at the same home in the backyard. Are you ready? Ready. Welcome everybody to this episode of Walking Between Shadows. We're your host. I'm Ben. I'm Taryn. And we're glad to have you. Don't forget during this video to hit that like and subscribe and notifications bell to see new content. We also appreciate when you share this if you want to help us keep doing what we love to do and bring you the information like we bring it. So, Taryn. Ben? I just want to ease into this because this is kind of breaking news still. Yeah. And it's something that just really mystifies me like i cannot figure this out i can't put my my finger on anything about this yeah you and me both yeah so sunday january the 7th the chiefs were playing the chargers in the final regular season game it was week 18 All right and three guys that we're going to talk about clayton mcgini 36 david harrington 37 and ricky johnson 38 they go over to a friend's house and what's that friend's name? Jordan Willis. Jordan Willis. And, and this is North KC. They go over there on Sunday, January the 7th, to watch the last regular season game of the Chiefs. Sure. And for all intents and purposes, they go there. They might be having drinks, have a little food or something, just having some fun watching the game with friends. Sure. Only after Sunday, January the 7th, on the 9th, Nobody had heard from these three. Yeah, that's and, right. And especially Clayton McGinney. His fiance actually wound up, because she had not heard from him in a couple of days, going over to this house. Mm -hmm. And upon approaching this house, you know, and this was late Tuesday night or Tuesday evening into the night. Around 10 p.m. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Approaching the house, she noticed that Clayton's car was still out front. Yeah. And there were other cars still out front. Mm -hmm. She goes up and she knocks on the door, more or less bangs on the door. No response. Then she apparently broke out a window and hollered into the house. Mm -hmm. No response. She made her way into the basement of the house and again out the back side where when she got to the back porch, she found a dead body. Holy. Yeah, she'd already called Kansas City Police, and, and they arrived in this time frame. And once they got there, upon further inspection, investigation of the grounds around this house, they found two more dead bodies in the backyard. And how big is the yard of the house? You know, this looks like a 2,000-square-foot split-level house, pretty typical of what you see in the Midwest, and especially around Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And And I would say the lot was probably... A quarter acre or something like that wasn't big at all. It was your typical residential neighborhood. Yeah, average size yard. Yeah, yeah, average. Yeah. Yeah, it was fenced in, so you couldn't see. If you were driving past the house, you couldn't see um, the backyard. Yeah. So at this time, you know, now we know that Clayton, David, and Ricky, all three are dead in the backyard of this house. Right. Where they went to watch a football game, have a good time, unwind, relax even. Mm -hmm. And their host, Jordan Willis, actually during the game, kind of later in the game, I assume, decided he, he couldn't make it through the night, so he went to bed. Yeah. And fast forward two days, and we find out that he actually was still there. Yeah, he never left the house. Right. And, and upon investigation, Kansas City PD got him to the front door when they went there to serve a warrant, a search warrant. And he comes out in his boxers with an empty wine glass, just nonchalant. Yeah. So they said to the police, they must have froze to death. Yeah. And, and apparently, now this is hearsay, he had actually told some of his family that his friends froze to death in his backyard. During, now that was during the time that they were missing. So yeah. that would have been from Sunday or from, say, Monday morning till Tuesday night when the police showed up. Yeah. At some point, he apparently told some family members that, his friends froze to death in the backyard. And and okay, let's 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 talk about these these guys because to me they look very average. You know, they don't look like drug addicts. They look like working guys that got together to watch a football game. I mean, right. it doesn't look like uh, like they went to this heroin party or you know no. 
it, no. it doesn't seem anything like that. And, it, and from what I understand, I know Ricky Johnson has a GoFundMe that we're going to put up, but um, he has four daughters, young daughters. Yeah. And I mean, it's just like they went to the, so they go to this guy, they go to Jordan's house, who is a scientist in Kansas City. What kind of scientist? I don't know. They just said he was a scientist in Kansas City. So clearly he's an educated guy. An educated guy. Uh huh. I believe he's 39 years old. I think you're right. Um, living in this decent home mm -hmm. in Kansas City, going to work as a scientist, and bites over these guys. They're, they're you know, enjoying the night, watching the Chiefs, and I'm trying to recall the weather. I do know that the Friday before that Sunday, which would have been the 5th, mm -hmm. I think we had, like, some snow come in. Mm -hmm. And, um, again, on Monday, Sunday night and Monday and Tuesday, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it was very cold those nights. I don't know. It's not as cold as it's been the past couple of days here, but it's been, it was cold. Right, right. So, I mean, so they're, they're, they, they decide to leave. These are healthy men. Mm -hmm. They could, if, if they would have gotten outside and they couldn't, I mean, they could leave. They just go out the gate and just go out the gate and go to your car. Yeah. Or to a neighbor's. It was right next door. Yeah. You couldn't get, I mean, it just, it's odd. Well, another thing is Jordan Willis had two dogs. So there was two dogs in the house, too. Yeah, and they were found in the backyard, and all of that looked fenced in from the pictures. Y'all can take a look at the picture of this house that we put up, and, and that backyard's fenced in. So it's like he, he said, all right, I'm going to bed. I wonder, did they take anything? I mean, is there a possibility that they may be? We're still waiting for the toxicology and the um, mm -hmm. autopsy reports to come back. So Kansas City PD uh, said that there were no obvious signs of foul play when they found the bodies. And right now there's no charges pending an outcome for toxicology and any other part of the investigation they're still working on. I wonder if they were in the basement and maybe there was like a carbon monoxide leak or something and they tried to get out. And, and you know, but Jordan wasn't affected? I don't know. I, that's, you know, but... but why wouldn't they have died in the basement? And why wouldn't he call the police? I mean, why was he asleep for her from Sunday night when the guys were there? And he said, good night, you know, I got to go to bed. And he slept till Tuesday night, 10 p.m.? Yeah, it seems like he was, he was checked out all the way from Sunday to Tuesday, which Odd. if he'd been telling his family that three of his friends froze to death in his backyard at some time during that period, then, yeah, he was conscious. He wasn't asleep and out of it that whole time. No. And, you know, this this fiancé of Clayton McGinney, uh -huh. she wasn't playing, was she? No. The, at this point, they were mad. Like, why are they not responding to us? I mean, it wasn't just her and Clayton. You know, it was friends of all of these people. Like, why are these guys not responding? And even, you know, Jordan Willis, the, the tenant in this property, why wasn't he responding? Well, he was seeing the messages, from what I understand. Yeah. He was seeing the messages from the friends and the fiancé and, you know, like, where, where's, where are they at? And he wasn't answering. No, no. And did he not let his dogs out for two days out in the backyard to go to the bathroom? I mean, he would have seen them. You would think so. And Especially it, with one on the back porch, for I mean, crying out loud. On the back porch, and I mean... It's like they just, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. It's very odd. Very strange. And then him saying, well, they must have just froze to death. I mean, I wouldn't know what to think either if, if it didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, see, I don't know what context he actually put that statement in. Right, like if they, he said, why would they, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But if he saw the messages coming in mm -hmm. and he knew their cars were out front, and he had two dogs that he should have been letting outside. I mean, you should be letting your dogs go outside unless right. he was letting them out front. But then he would have saw the cars. Yeah, yeah. It, There's no point at which he would have entered or exited that house that he would not have come across some evidence of those guys still being there in some capacity. I just don't think so. No. No, there's, there's just no way. I mean, unless he is just completely fucked out of his mind on drugs. Well, and now suddenly in the last few days, there's been a U-Haul truck there, so he's on the move. Oh, so he's moving. 
That's what it sounds like. And he didn't show up for work either those days. Like, I mean, because this wasn't a holiday. This would have been January the 8th and the 9th. Mm -hmm. He didn't show up for work those days either. You know, we've we've covered Eric Soto and or Savannah Soto and, and Matthew Guerra. Mm -hmm. And we talk about how, you know, the suspects in that case sat at home and planned. I just, I wonder if this guy, if Jordan Willis knew what had happened and stayed there, like maybe talking to some of his family members, like what should I do? What could I do? And this fiance of Clayton McGinney's got ahead of him. But I mean, what can you do? You've got three bodies in your yard. I, I know. I mean, you were, he wasn't even trying to conceal those bodies in his yard. No. He was just not acknowledged. Either he didn't know or he was trying to scheme a way out of it. I don't know. He was. How do we know that U-Haul truck didn't have caskets in it? Just saying. Yeah, but that, you, you, what could they do now? I mean, the bodies are, they're gone. They've been gone. Well, sure. I mean, it, to me, it sounds like he's moving out of that house. I don't know if he's being harassed by these people, which I, I would too. I'd want to know what happened. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't go harassing suspects, but. But they don't need to go two or three days and sleep on it a little bit <laughs> before they figure out what they need to do. Oh, my God. I, and, I mean, if it would have been an accident, like I said, these guys were perfectly capable of tearing the fence down if they couldn't get in through the house to get yeah, out to the front. Yeah. They had cell phones. Well, I, you know, I think pending toxicology, we, we're going to hear something yeah. interesting. Yeah. You know, and, and it could go either way. It could go that there is some foul play involved, or it could go that, hey— these guys may have gotten accidentally poisoned. Right. And, and maybe even, you know, Jordan, maybe they took something that was laced with fentanyl and maybe it didn't affect Jordan like it did the two other guys mm -hmm. or three other men. Mm -hmm. You know, it maybe he had some kind of tolerance to it. Maybe. And, and that's just speculation because I'd, I'd hate to say somebody did drugs that did not do drugs willingly, you know. Yeah, maybe his wasn't uh, poisoned. You know, I don't think I've ever even heard of anything like this before. Mm -mm. I, ever. I mean, you hear of like carbon monoxide poisoning and, you know, people going in the garage and hooking up a hose to their, uh, what's it called? Their, their exhaust. Their exhaust to their window. And, mm -hmm. You know, but this is three guys that had had lives. You know, they had a life. They were going to work. They had children. They had girlfriends, fiancés. You know, yep. like, this was, you know, this is odd. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like they met a pack. What was that? What was that? Um, what was that case out of, I can't remember what state it was, but it, they were waiting for the aliens to come. You remember? It was Heaven's Gate. It was out in California. Okay. And they were waiting for this comet to come hit. Yeah, the Haley Bop comet Haley. come by. And it was so supposedly an alien ship. And it was coming to pick them all up. I mean, the, their leader, Marshall Applewhite, had convinced them that the aliens were going to come pick them up and, and whisk them away to another dimension he, or something. He was, he was an odd-looking creature. Oh, man, weird. So I'm not saying these guys planned something like that. No. But, you know, that was something that, you know, happened that several, you know, people just got together and they were gone. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't know if it was something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, anything's possible at this point without the information that, you know, like KCPD and mm -hmm. the medical examiner are holding on to or, or don't even know yet. We don't know that they've finished testing or anything like that, but we're waiting on it. Mm -hmm. And we definitely are going to report on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we, I'm calling this like the Kansas City 3 right now. Yeah, this is definitely one that I want to keep up with because I'm going to. I want yeah. to know what happened. I want to know what happened. Yeah. So, again, you know, Clayton McGinney, 36, David Harrington, 37, and Ricky Johnson, 38. And um, if you're watching, we're going to post, or here it is, the, the GoFundMe page uh, for Ricky Johnson, his funeral expenses. Um, and a picture of him and his three girls. Um, so sad, sad situation. Very, very sad. Yep. Yeah. So I, 
also I, I just want to thank everybody for watching uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and click that notifications bell and uh, we'll be back to see you soon with updates on this and other cases in the future this is walking between shadows and we're your host i'm ben i'm taryn and we'll see you again soon bye